at full forward. Rockcliffe, gee, that was strong by Rockcliffe. That is a terrific goal. Fantasia or Fantasia? Roaming Arasio. Arasio Fantasia! I wonder how far we've got to go back to see when time on was allowed for a pig on the ground. Welcome to Rock the Razbar, episode 12. I'm joined by my co-host, Arazio Fantasia, like I am every week. How are you? I'm good, Rock. I'm a little bit sore, a little bit ginger, but good to be back. Got through the game? I did, yes. I didn't have my kicking boot on, but uh, it was good good fun. We expect you to play again in the next 12 months? Yes, sir. Fantastic. Yes, sir. You may even slip into the senior team this week. So we'll we have see. a massive guest, so let's get to him. I would like to welcome Mr. Chris Davies to the pod. Peter's Cathedral in the City of Churches. That's well struck. And that's a nice way to bring up the 100 for Chris Davies. Welcome, great man. Tom, thank you. Now, I'm going to uh, just read a little bit of an introduction here into Mr. Chris Davies. He has been the general manager of the fo football club at Port Adelaide since 2014. Uh, but who is Mr. Chris Davis? Also known as CD or Chief, Davies grew up a highly talented soccer player and at one stage was uh, scouted by Manchester United Raz to go over there and play. Really? Wow. But uh, became a professional cricketer uh, due okay. to some health concerns that we'll touch on a little bit later. He represented Australia at under-19 level before having a su successful career for South Australia. Played over 25 Sheffield Shield matches and 38 List A matches. I'm not sure what they are. What are List A matches? One day games. One day games. Um, he, what else did he do? He journeyed into uh, sports administration after that, general manager and cricket operations manager and membership, sorry, of the Australian Cricketers Association, CEO of the Woodville West Torrens Football Club, general manager of football of the Sandful, much loved figure around the place by the players and all staff that uh, come across come across so it's, it's great to have you on board there's a few questions that we want to get straight into yes i'll kick us off how did you get the nickname chief just a, an easy question well i think that came with me from the eagles um trent henschel obviously followed me from the eagles to port adelaide and and the guys at the eagles used to call me that okay. so very simple raz not not Nothing too deep it. and a couple of things in that intro that aren't quite right i, I couldn't possibly suggest that i was Good enough to be scouted by Manchester United. I do support them, but thank you for saying it anyway, Tom. You're a very good soccer player, though, as a junior. Uh, I was one of those people who was a really good junior sports person and fizzled out once they got to uh, the capacity of being a senior player in both uh, soccer and cricket. That's really. not quite true, though, is it? Because you had restrictions on why you couldn't continue to play soccer. Uh, well, I made a decision to, to not continue on with soccer, but um, as I say, I, I don't think I was going to ever be good enough to to play at the top level there and cricket was something that I was good at so I just continue to play that yeah I'm going to touch on a bit of cricket CD we've had some talented cricketers on the staff at the club head of recruiting Parco played for Redbacks in Victoria and Bass played a bit of uh, state cricket and he he tells everyone he does um do you have any memories playing against those guys well I played a lot with Jeff Parker okay. um so he was uh Part of, our, part of the team when I first came into it. He, obviously, I think he's about seven or eight years older than me, so he was he was already part of the team. I think I actually, uh, he got dropped for me to come in, so that was a bit uncomfortable when I first started yeah. here at Port Adelaide. And then, as you say, Bass was uh, Bass was a good, really good junior cricketer as well. So I think I've known him since he was about 14 or 15. We, we played in the same cricket teams. Simon Goodwin was part of that cricket team as well. So there's, you know, pretty some good footy um, names it was probably a better football team than what it was a cricket team to be honest so yeah. uh, but it was good to be part of Jeff Parker when you were 12th man I think he <coughs> made a big hundred he did yeah that was that was back in the days when um, when the 12th man had to do everything for um, the players who were actually out there and and Jeff as you say I think it was the one of the first ever day night uh, Sheffield Chill games uh, really really hot you know game and Parks yeah, you know, I was carrying a little bit of weight, um, but made you know a significant number of runs, and and unfortunately, when he came off the field, um, he started to cramp, and so um, and significantly cramp, full body type stuff. So it was a twelfth man's responsibility to not only take his cricket gear off, but to take his gear off, and you know I had I had the unfortunate um, 
sort of a message of uh, getting him to a position where he was able to have a shower. It was not something that I... <laughs> Hold on a second. Um, you had to shower, you gave him a... I sort of had to get him into a position where he could go into the shower, <laughs> which... Uh, <laughs> So it you, certainly wasn't ideal. It's I can still when I close my eyes sometimes <laughs> I can see it. Um, it's not ideal, let me tell you. Oh. Um, but uh, Parks and I are good friends, and um, yeah, yeah. Uh, we we'll, we'll, we'll always share that moment. You have to be if you get uh, bathing one of your teammates. That's for sure. Yes. You have to be certainly close. Now there's a famous video that does the rounds on social media every now and then of Ian Har Harvey cleaning you up. I, you know, there is, I'm convinced that there's someone at Cricket Victoria who is just <laughs> trolling me. Um, so, you know, when it, whenever it's Harves' birthday or an anniversary of something, um, they generally wind up a, uh, a in-swinging Yorker that was a ball that was wasted on me. Uh, he could have got far better players than me out with that, um, with that ball and uh, does the rounds. And as you say, I think... Uh, Hamish Hartlett sent one to me only two nights ago, which was uh, me swinging at a wide, outswinging sort of half volley from Paul Rifle. Um, and it was Paul Rifle's the 25th anniversary of him <laughs> starting to be an umpire or something. And, and uh, suddenly that just rolls out as the reason. So, as I say, I'm, I'm doing some investigating to see who at Cricket Victoria it is that's wanting to wind me up. Yeah. Uh, Chief, what are some of your fondest memories about playing cricket? You obviously played lots of cricket. Did you, did you get overseas and play a bit of cricket there as well? or? Uh, I didn't didn't really play much uh, in England. I yep. um, <clears throat> even though that was where my family was from, I, I I wish that I could have played more over there. I was I was normally injured during the off season, so yep. didn't have much time to do that. But yeah, you know, fortunate to to go away and play in some junior Australian teams, which um, you know were great experiences. I played in the World Cup in South Africa, a junior World Cup over there. I played um, in Pakistan. I, I to toured India. Wow. Yeah, so a whole heap of places that you wouldn't necessarily think about going for a holiday. You yep. know, I was fortunate enough to, you know, I reckon I was six weeks in Pakistan. That was before September 11 and the world sort of changing. So, yep. um, you know, fortunate, as I say, to spend some time overseas playing. Not not with any great success, but, um, yeah, it was, was a great part of my life. Can we touch, sorry, Rob, to cut you off. Can you touch on that World Cup? How old were you, 17 then? Or was it under yeah, 19? It was under 19. Under 19, um, yeah. can't really remember how old it was, but... Yep. Um, I didn't go great, <clears throat> but um, the the team made it through to the um, the semi final. I think we lost to England, um, yeah. who ended up going on and winning winning the um, the final. And um, they, had, you know, there was a number of good players again that played for for England in that World Cup. Chris Gale played. Um, which I think there was a, a number of blokes from New Zealand who went and, went on and played Test cricket. Yeah. Um, we had. Yeah, you know, we we had a reasonable team, but nowhere near what was required to to actually you know, mm -hmm. win it. But um, again, it was you know coached by Alan Border. It was a was a great time to to be part of that team. Did a bit of research, and surely the hundred you made against Western Australia was one of your career highlights. You walked off the ground, man of the match, and the great Tony Gregg uh, interviewed you. That's right. Yeah, it was it was uh, very early in my career. It sort of went downhill from there. I I think it was my third or fourth one day game um, for South Australia at. Uh, at Adelaide Oval and I uh, was as I say, fortunate enough to to get some runs that day and and the team won which was you know great and you know the the interview after wasn't my best moment but um <laughs> it was uh it was good to look back on can we elaborate we'll just have a look and listen at that interview now so it's a man of the match award and uh today well it wasn't that hard Chris Davis congratulations thanks very much right well you obviously enjoyed that very much oh yeah it was it was excellent it uh under pretty good conditions as well, so it's, it's good to uh, get away to a good start and have a win. That's right. Now, when well, you say the conditions were good, uh, this is one of the, the special spots of the world of cricket. It must be it must be a good feeling plugging into this environment. Oh, it's it's very good. I mean, you're going out on a on a track that's uh, it's probably a batter's paradise today, and, and the outfield's beautiful. So uh, can't ask much more. Yeah. Now, what happened there, Chris? Well, you know, it was. <laughs> I wasn't that old. Uh, I think I was 18 or 19 at the time, and uh, it was I was all you know the lights and cameras and having Tony Gregg in front of me got the better of me. To be honest, it was he was an imposing figure, and uh, I'd just come off the the time of my life. I don't think I'd made too many runs in club cricket um, before being able to you know perform there. So it was a you know a, and again against the WA team, which had some amazing players in it as well. So they, I think they're the times that you look back and think. You know, yeah, I was able to get some runs, but I also played some good quality cricket against players who were outstanding cricketers for both their state and also 
uh, our country. Hey, Chief, I can tell you two have such a, a close relationship. <laughs> Is he one of the hardest yeah. bikes you've ever had to manage and look after or what? No, look, he was he was fine. You know, you, you had to be able to um, exist, you know, with time on a on a mental sort of you know level be on yeah. his, the same wavelength which you know he and i often used to spar at various points in time as you know yeah. um you know the verbal sort of volleys going back and forth i mean <laughs> um tom often says to me that you know we fell for the three card trick and giving him an extra year just on after he went out to dinner with chris jard and uh <laughs> sticks kernahan at, at carlton down ligon street um yeah, we knew we had to give him four years to get him get him across, and yep. you know uh, it was probably two years too many, really, wasn't it? I mean, he played um, <laughs> much of his good footy in those first two years, and then he um, just sort of rested on his laurels, and you know uh, wasn't quite able to get it done after that. Mm, I might keep my mouth shut too. Then <laughs> all-time favourite player that you've worked with at Port Adelaide since uh, Arazio bought out that. Mm. Well, look, I mean, you're at close to the top. Um, it's hard to go past. Rob and Trav, though, isn't it? I mean, you know, those two, uh, you know, guys who don't give me any grief. <laughs> you know, Charlie for, um, for again, you know, his output, getting him to the club, you know, was one of the first people that, you know, we were able to, to talk into coming uh, after I started. So I've got a soft spot for big Charlie, although he's given me some headaches over time as well, <laughs> big fella. Um, but uh, can I settle on Robbie and Trav? Yeah, you can have a have a tie. I think there's a lot of Port Adelaide people that love those too. That's for sure. Before we go back, uh, we're going to take a couple of steps back. But while we're in this space, I want to know what your favourite part of your job is and if you can explain your role at the footy club to us. Yeah, okay. So the, the role itself is, you know, obviously the, the department effectively reports into me. Um, you know, Ken sits off to the side in the sense of, um, you know, his, his role is, you know, board-driven. You know, I have a great relationship with with Ken I think you know he um you know I'm able to ask questions of him that you know I, th I think uh show that we've got a good relationship you know if, if I don't see something you know on a game day or in training that we're trying to implement then you know he, he allows me to to be the the question you know on the top of his shoulder um obviously the recruiting group um reporting to me and you know ultimately I need to allocate our resources uh, in the right sort of area and the the best part for me is still the the win loss on the weekend I mean it's hard to go past that that want to be part of a, a team when you've been part of a sporting team for a long period of time the reality is is that the win loss actually is what you crave and and as much as you know the time is hard when you're losing games it's still the thing that um you know you're, you're chasing the win and so that becomes a greater carrot to chase that than you know the the lows of the the losses. Uh, worst, worst part. Worst part is is when well when we lose, feeling like you know you're letting you know an army of people down. Um, you know, thinking that you you might have been able to influence things different through the week. I mean, when we lose, you know, you, you're going through the whole week, the whole previous two weeks, and thinking, geez, did we get this right? Did we? Did we not? It's hard not to second guess yourself, you know, at, at various points in time. Um, so that that's a challenge. Um, I, I mean, I, I don't like it when our players get into trouble, um, and <laughs> that uh, that's something that you know um, is not an easy part because again, you, you're understanding that you know you're you're representing sponsors, you're representing um, you know your your staff, your fan base, our members who you know have high expectations and rightly so, and you know for for our performance both on and off the field. Chief, you're quite passionate about your footy. Has it always been something you wanted to get into? Obviously, you're at Woodville for a little bit and, and cricket before that, but was always you've always been passionate about footy. Well, it's funny because, as Rock mentioned, you know my my background sporting is soccer and and cricket, but my my earliest memories are actually of going to the footy. So um, my dad uh, came over from from England um, very quickly, knew that to assimilate into um, you know, Australian culture was to, to get involved and, and have footy. support a footy team. Uh, so, you know, I would play soccer in the morning and then Dad would dress me up and we'd, we'd go to the footy in the afternoon. Um, you know, he was a Sturt supporter. So, yep. uh, you know, remember going to, to Unley, you know, and, and watching their games for a while. I had, you know, his brothers were Port Adelaide supporters. So I had this, um, you know, dichotomy often of, um, 
you know, two teams who, who couldn't be so different from a um, from what they think they stand for type of perspective. Um, but, you know, as, as I said, you know, really love footy, love the game. Was fortunate to know a number of footballers um, as I was playing cricket. Obviously, most, as you guys know, you know most footballers have a soft, soft spot for cricket and want to know all about cricket stories, which I'm really fortunate to be able to, to give them. And then equally, the, the cricketers, we always... You know, warm-ups would be footy. Um, you know, if we were if we were trying to have some fun during the off season, it was always you know with the football. So, yeah, I, and you know, I guess in answer to your question of getting involved in footy, I, at the time it was the job that was available. I was living in Melbourne. Uh, you know, made a decision to come back to Adelaide, and and the role at the Eagles um, came up, and you know, really fortunate to be involved in a really good football club there. Who, uh, from an SNFL perspective, had, had done some pretty good things in in their life. Yep. Yeah, there. So I'm um, not fortunate to be involved there. How do those roles from the CEO to the GM at AFL, are they obviously completely different? And do you see yourself wanting to go down that path again? Yeah. Well, as I say, the, the job at the Eagles was, was a CEO role, but effectively you, you took on the role of you know, having um, the football management type of, of okay. stuff. Um, yep. You know, there, there's also obviously a commercial element to, to being a CEO, which... Yeah, I thought I could do well. It just wasn't what I really favoured doing. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, in answer to the question of whether I, I can see myself in that sort of role again, I'm, I'm not sure I can. Um, yeah, I, I like the the win-loss aspect and actually being intrinsically involved in that. Yeah, um, yeah that's what at the moment is, is driving me. You know, whether it's, you know, I mean, I, I also know that there's a, uh, there's a shelf life for all of these roles and if you can't get it done over a period to whatever level the, the club decides, then we've all got that shelf life and I'm well and truly understanding of that. Um, you know, I hope that we're able to, to achieve that under my watch. But as I say, I'm, I'm a realist. I know that this is all about performance and uh, if we don't get it done, the, the club needs to change and, and you know, I'll be the first to put my hand up if that's the case. Your name was thrown around as the footy operations, I think, at the AFL was came became available you uh name was thrown around a lot by a lot of people in the media and um a lot of people that know footy inside out there's a job available as afl ceo would you potentially look at that down the track no i don't think that's me tom um not sure i could do the schmoozing that's um, (laughs) required for for that role um i guess you never say never but i i you know i think from my perspective the reason why I wasn't necessarily part of that that AFL um, GM of football role um, was that I thought that I would be away from win-loss on the weekend. And as I say, maybe I'm a saddest um, in terms of, uh, you know, wanting to go through the highs and lows. But, you know, I'm just not – I mean, no one barracks for the AFL, just like no one barracks for the SNFL when I was there. So, you know, although putting on the competition is a, is a good thing, I, I still really enjoy um, being involved at a club. You went in a sports admin. You retired at f- 24 from professional sport. Why that career path? Well, was it the one thing I knew? I mean, you know, uh, as you say, I, I retired early and that was mainly because my body wasn't allowing me to, to play at the top level. And I, the reality was I wasn't that good. So, you know, when you're balancing the your, your ability to play and then, you know, the injuries that come with it... Um, you know, I, I sort of the writing on the wall at some point that I was going to have to look at something else. I mean, I was fortunate that throughout my cricket career, I, I worked the whole time. So uh, despite the fact that we were, we were getting some reasonable money to actually play the game, we still weren't full time professionally. I had trainings would be before nine or after four. So, you know, instead of just going and doing whatever I wanted through those times, I, I worked at um, Adelaide Bank and Bank West for, for periods of time. So made sure that I had something off the field that I could do as well and um, then you know the opportunity came for me to, to move into more of a sports you know admin job I, I'd done sports administration um, studies so at TAFE you know the the SACA and uh, Port Adelaide and Adelaide at the time actually had some of the young players going through like a sports administration traineeship type study work so you know I was uh, it was me from the SACA again Goody Kane Johnson from Adelaide, um, Rep Biglands, Matthew Bode, who were here at Port Adelaide at the time, were all a part of that. So we had some like real fun actually doing it. But uh, <laughs> as much as anything, it was just what I fell into. And uh, you dabbled in a bit of coaching. Did you see yourself ever going down that path or not really? 
I, I really liked coaching. Um, yeah. you know, I, I was fortunate to coach the Adelaide Cricket Club here, which was was my cricket club. Um, I started at Southern Districts, but moved to Adelaide and and um, coached them in the last couple of years that I was I was here before moving to Melbourne, um, and then had the real fortunate um, aspect of of coaching the Melbourne Cricket Club, which you know for for everyone, I'm sure they would be aware. You know, it's it's the biggest club um, from a you know, a, an Australian perspective. Um, you know, I coached there for for only one year, but it was a was a great experience, and you know, so many resources. Great, you know, oval to play at at the Albert Grounds, just on St Kilda Road in Melbourne. Um, you know, really, really good people, and you know, all of their, um, you know, the MCG is their their home. You know, yeah. it's uh, so to to have your name up on, um, you know, one of the honour boards there as as a coach of that club was like is amazing for yeah. for me and. I'll always be indebted to you know what that cricket club gave to me. You've seen the AFLW um, <clears throat> come into the AFL system, but also now at Port Adelaide Footy Club. Take us through the process there and how that's you've had been really hands on in that. And of course, we know the AFLW draft is on tonight. Uh, do you want to take us through how that that came about and the workings behind the scenes? Yeah, well, I mean, the club obviously initially, you know, we were. Um, yeah, we didn't get the, the first license here in South Australia. Adelaide um, did, and they've they've done in fairness to them. Yeah, you know, they've done a pretty good job. And so, um, you know, from that perspective, you know, you've got to give them the the credence of of uh, suggesting that they've done a good job. Obviously, us being in the in the competition, you know, from from this year on is um, going to be a, a great thing, I think, for our football club. Um, you know, we've we've put in some fantastic people. You know, I think we we've set the program up in the right way and in what the AFL, you know, intend. Um, you know, we've got a fantastic coach. Um, you know, Lauren Arnell will, will do an amazing job. She's she's a, you know, a, a strong presence who, you know, I've got a, a great deal of faith in, is going to do, you know, really great things with um, with her coaching. Um, Juliet Haslam, obviously, you know, comes in, um, you know, really strong background sport herself um, and also has worked in sports administration, you know, her offside of Rachel Spawn, you know, Rachel's obviously, again, you know, such a strong um, female voice will, will um, no doubt be able to lead, you know, our athletes um, in professionalism um, and showing them, you know, what they should value. And then Naomi Maidman, who, you know, also has a, a cricket background, who uh, has done an amazing job in um, in her ability to put a list together. You know, it's it's been you know, massive job for her, but she's done an, an amazing job of, of getting the group to where they're at. You know, we'll have seven picks, Rocky, um, tomorrow night in, in sorry, tonight in the uh, in the draft. Um, and um, Dersma, a chance? Yeah, I think Yasmin's a chance. Yeah, Yaz has, has uh, suggested that she wants to, to be in South Australia, um, you know, to start her footy career. So it's obviously either going to be us or, or Adelaide, and we're hopeful that it's us. Um, you know, we, we've got our, our draft list of people who are going to be involved. Um, you know, uh, Jason Cripps will be in, involved on the night as well to um, to uh, help guide the group. But, you know, we think we've established a, a really good list. You know, it might not be good enough to win in, in year one, but we, we feel like we've put together a group who are going to, you know, be the first group who, who lead us to success at um, AFLW level. And I'll... I'm sure that I'll look back with a heap of pride, ultimately, at being part of um, you know, putting that group of people together. Because, as I say, I, I couldn't believe that anyone at AFL level would be looking at us and thinking anything else other than they've done this the right way, um, with the way that uh, it should be intended. Um, and um, we've given you know a new voice to a, a whole group of people who you know should be looking and, and seeing what they can achieve in the game. Chief, before we get into footy, because we do want to talk about some footy and, and how we're going at the moment, you're working closely with Julia, like you spoke about. Do you take a bit of a mentor role there and just and upskill her and, and help her the, the best way you can? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm there for whatever Juliet needs, really. I yeah. mean, um, yeah, she's she's hit the ground running. Uh, you know, let's not kid ourselves. She's she's been you know the the leader of of that group. You know, as much as anything for me, it was about getting the right person in that role at the yeah. start so that. You know, my focus could still remain um, on the you know the, the AFL program yep. whilst you know we were putting the the W program together. Um, 
yeah, I mean, obviously I've got a level of experience that Juliet doesn't have in, in AFL football at the moment, but that's not to suggest that she's not going to be very quickly up to speed with yep. everything that she um, she needs to put in place. But, yeah, I'm here for anything that Juliet needs. Now, footy-wise, two prelims the last two years. We know the key factor to the reason of the drop-off in the first five weeks. Clearly, I left the club, so... That's why uh, the wins weren't coming. I think you were a little bit disappointed when I didn't stay on at the club because I couldn't run down the bakery, get your pepper, pepper pasty for you, a couple of donuts to go. But where are we at on field? We've seen on the weekend uh, a great great win at home against the Suns by two points. The Sample had a, a loss to, to the Bays. We need to see the Sample take on North Adelaide this Saturday, 2-10 down at uh, Prospect Oval where someone had 57 there one day and we see the senior team Comes take up every. on Fremantle Sunday afternoon in the Pirate Life game, um, sponsor of both clubs. Where's the, the team at and how do we get to where we want to get to? The ultimate is that the premiership. We've seen we've backtracked a little bit this year. Are we starting the trend in the right direction now? Well, I think, I mean, you can only say that the last nine weeks have been positive obviously being zero and five at the start was not anywhere near where we thought we would be and and you know we put ourselves behind the eight ball I think yeah, our reality since then has been you know Ken and the players have done and coaches have done a fantastic job in keeping the group together I mean that's something that you know wasn't a given I think at that point no matter no matter what sporting event you're involved in you know when you lose that number of games in a row um, the potential is there for you know, in fighting for, um, for you know, people dropping off their message. Um, you know, we didn't, we didn't have that. I'm sure you'd agree, Raz, mm-hmm. that um, the group stayed together in a really strong fashion, which was going to be the most important thing at that point. Um, you know, seven two over the last nine nine weeks is, you know, is is a great position. We've we've at least put ourselves back in the race to, um, to try and you know sneak into the finals. It looks like it's a year where you know we're potentially going to need 13 wins in order to get there but you know the, the our reality is as Ken has said is that we need to look at Fremantle this week as as the next opportunity to to get closer um, being back at seven and seven is a is a good outcome for us but it's as I say it's nowhere near where we thought we wanted to be at the start we've seen clubs in the past have a really good year or a couple of years drop off and then come back with <coughs> bounce really strong is there one thing that you can identify is missing or is there a piece of the puzzle that we need to fix to, to get to that ultimate? Like it's going to be a tough year. Even if we make finals, it's going to be really challenging from my point of view now that I'm outside the club to, to win the ultimate. History tells us that if you're finishing that bottom half of the eight, it's really hard to win the grand final. Is there anything missing or is there one piece of the puzzle that we need to go right to, to win that? Well, I, I, look, I think that if you, if you are able to distinguish the first five games, let's say, with what's happened after that, you know, there, there was some significant... Um, injuries that, and people who were missing through that period. Now, you know, I've said ad nauseum since then that despite the fact that we didn't have Dixon and Aaliyah for good parts of that, Robbie, you know, we, we miss Raz as much as, you know, we, um, you know, we haven't had him much this year. The reality is, is at our best, you know, he's a, an outstanding player for us. Um, you know, we, we need to be able to cover those sort of losses better. Um, I think that, you know, right now we would be suggesting that Todd Marshall's growth when Charlie wasn't in has been significant. And on that basis, you know, maybe we'll be better, you know, late this year, next year, when those two potentially are able to, to play together. Um, we've seen Connor take some steps forward as, um, as a mid, you know, after that period of time. And, and our reality was that because we had so many players out of the front half that, you know, the coaches made a decision to, to play, you know, Connor and, and Butsy more forward at the start. You know, I think, both of those going back into you know mid sort of mid forward roles has has helped us and will be better long term for that. Um, you know I guess uh, from a list perspective, you know our our tall backs are, are you know getting older in years, so we, we've got to be able to provide some support to them ongoing. But you know I don't think there's any there's ever one piece of the puzzle. I think that there's um, that the team has to learn to be able to play with the players that it has and, and be able to cope with, from a game style perspective, with uh, some players missing from time to time. And at the start of the year, we, we clearly weren't able to do that. Chief, are you part of those conversations? Like, as you said, Rose started forward mm-hmm. and then you know they come into the midfield. Do you sit down with, with Kenny and, and Monty and, and discuss that? Yeah, I mean, all of those decisions are, are group decisions. I mean, ultimately, 
um, you know, Ken Lee's Lee leans heavily on you know his his line coaches, but yeah. ultimately, you know, at the end of the day, I, I say to Ken, mate, it's your team. You know, you need to be able to own those decisions, where yeah. you know, rightly or wrongly, um, you know, there's no point looking back and and saying, well, that did or didn't work, and I should have. At the end of the day, you're employed to make that decision. Yeah. Um, and that goes for the same with me, you know, personnel sort of decisions across the, the program are, are mine. And if we get them wrong, then, you know, you, you've got to be good enough to put your hand up and say, well, we, we, might, we might have changed this. And that's not to say that that, that was a, a wrong decision at the start of the year. It was yeah. legitimate. It was made for for the right reasons. Um, you know, did it work out for us? Well, you know, maybe Connor, you know, playing as good as he has in the last seven or eight weeks was because he, he did more work developing as a forward. Um they're all questions that you've got to be able to, you know, ask, answer and ask of yourself uh, ongoing in order to, to get better. Yep. I'm going to wrap this up and let you go. I just want a uh, number here, potential of six changes this week. I'll read them out to you. I want to know the number that you think will come in. The hard-hitting Butters, question. Lysette. I want to rock the Rasbar exclusive. <laughs> Butters, Lysette, Fantasia, Gray, Burn jones Cleary. Well, if you... If you I heard, just want a number. No, hang on. I just got to <laughs> explain something here. If you heard my radio interview yesterday, I started. I don't the morning listen to that station. With oh, a competitor station of of whatever one you're on, um, <laughs> with uh, saying that Lysett was three to four weeks away, and then by the afternoon he, he was two to three weeks away. So well, maybe Ken maybe said, a day later. Ken yeah. said in the press conference after the game, well, I said two to three at, at AFL level. So okay. you know. Um, not straight in. Well, he's been out for a decent period. Um, we did make the great man here go through the SNFL in order to to potentially come back this week. So let me say, can you just read those out again? Butters, yep. Lysette, Burn jones Fantasia, Cleary, Gray. I think four. Four changes. Ooh. Okay. And you decide. Okay, Rock, look at There you go. Exclusive. Two last things I want to touch on. Greg Blewett, weights room story, you and him? Yeah, well, I mean, look, Greg was uh, one of the people that I looked up to as uh, growing up and, you know, thinking that he's a guy who, you know, has done it, done it all and um, has got it all. But then uh, soon started to train with the um, the state squad and I realised how, um, how bad he was in the gym. <laughs> and, um, and he used to get really narky when I'd just walk in and whatever he was benching for, um, I'd just say, you know, leave that on, Blue. And I'd just come in and <laughs> push it out. And he has never been able to get over that. It's the one thing that he constantly <laughs> drills me on when he's when he's on your radio station and asks me questions. He, he never wants to go near the gym questions because he knows that despite the fact that, you know, I was operating with three quarters of a lung, um, <laughs> that I could... Um, I could always outbench him. <laughs> How's your back feeling? Actually, you came in the gym and, and squatted. What was it? One forty the other day. I did. <laughs> Just I did. for those out there. Yeah. Just, oh, it's, you saw it. I did, and you walked straight in. Bang. Straight in. Bang. Out. Just do you just, squat just what, in and out? Was that a body weight? What you weigh? You got to squat. I just came in and just went, showed the boys up. It was quite impressive. And our yeah, guess that's, next that's the type of stuff I do rock is to. Uh, just to wander around and show show a couple up just every now and then, just to make sure that they know that I've still got it. Um, and uh, if you whatever it is, I'm happy to have a go at it. Um, yeah, on the most part. No, you for me, you're uh, amazing. I want to touch on you on the wrap up, but Kyle Chal- Chalmers is our guest next week. Who's that? <laughs> you, want have, you want to have another go? Let's have a, do you want to have another go? Kyle Chambers is our Kyle uh, Chalmers. <laughs> Cole Chalmers, Mate. you know that I love words, so I uh, did that deliberately because every time you yeah, come on you. Triple M, you uh, always speak about my tennis names that I yep. try and get out, so yep. I wanted to have a little bit of fun on the way out. Well, so Kyle's on next week. That's that's amazing. That's an amazing get for our club, and I'm not sure how it's possible that you could have me on the week before when you've got you know an Olympic gold medalist to, uh, to come on the week after. Um, yeah, he's a... He's a person who's been a great supporter of this club i mean you would remember uh when we were in the hub in melbourne last year oh <laughs> i didn't you make it there were you no no, no. when we when we it. watched him um compete the way he did and obviously just got touched out but um yeah what a what a port adelaide name to to have on 
as I say, I'm a bit embarrassed that you've got me on the week before, to be honest. The thing that I love most about Chris Davies is he is one of those pe people in a high position that could be so serious all the time, but he can always get you up no matter how you're feeling, down, flat. He always comes in and puts a smile on your face. And the most, the one thing I admire about Chris is post-game, if it's a loss, he's always the last to leave. And if it's a win, he's the first to leave. And I think it goes a long way to say about the character of who he is. So thank you for jumping on Rock the Ras Bar, Chris Davies. Thank you for having me. This place is different. It has a soul, a heartbeat. It gets into your senses. It's more than football. It's belonging. Friday night footy brought to you by KFC. How good was that chat with Chris Davies before we move on? Yeah, he, uh, I'm sure he had a few more stories that he could have, uh, you know, divulged, but it was uh, it was really good. There's so much to uh, cover and unpack with him, and we could have gone on for, for an hour, hour and a half, and, and not even touch the surface. So, yeah, a really good chat, great insights into where the footy club's at and the direction it's heading now. I want to take you back to last week. Mm -hmm. uh, we had the double header. The combined margin we went for, we both yep. picked both winners. Uh, we both went for West Coast, which uh, a Done. lot of people didn't. You had 42 points, I think. I did. Um, I went with 60, and it ends up being 52 points. No. So I've won stiff. by a point. Yeah, stiff. One point either way. It would have been a tie, of course. So we'll get to that <sighs> challenge in a minute. Uh, we do have some KFC beanies and bucket hats to give away. There's been a, a lot of commentary around that on the okay. socials, that how do they get one of them. The way we're going to give them away is you're going to send your questions through. We'll get the post out on potentially Monday next week. That's uh, for Carl. The Carl questions. Yes. Best Carl yes. questions. Yep. Who have we got? Carl, is it Cham Chambers? Did you Chambers, think? Chalmers, Chambers. <laughs> the great man that who's coming in. all theatre, of course. Now, if you want to win one of them, the best questions will be uh, taken away from that. We'll have him live from overseas. We're going to first time that okay. we're going to try that. So That'll be good. Um, if you want to win a bucket hat here... Um, not really working for the audio listeners or, or Beanie, <laughs> yeah. um, get your questions through on the Port Adelaide post, which will be um, the question, uh, and we'll pick best questions, yep. the winners. If your like question it. gets asked, they will uh, receive one of them, and we still have to get that jumper together to, to send out for, the Terry from Dactyl. round one. <laughs> so that's uh, a bit of admin that we've got to touch Nort. on. But, uh, that's that's Norton. Daniel Norton will get that done yep. now that he's back from overseas. Uh, the AFL teams we touch on, they take on uh, Fremantle Sunday afternoon mm. in the Pirate Life game over there. Big game, Rock. P potentially you're back. Well, hopefully. That's not up to me. Uh, but I feel like uh, getting the run under my belt definitely helped. I needed it. And the Sanf will take on North Adelaide at Prospect Oval at 2.10 on Saturday afternoon. Now, moving on, let's place the bet. Then I'm going to get you to do this challenge. Okay. Um, Carlton take on St. Kilda, Friday night footy, brought to you by KFC. Okay. Winner and margin. I think we're both going to go Carlton. We're going to go Carlton. And I think you should go margin first because I went first last time. Um, I'm not sure where St. Kilda are at at the moment. They're mm. uh, backs against the wall. I think Carlton will win by 37 points. Yeah, I don't think by that much. I think you've gone too far. I think... The Saints will get a little response, a bit of a spike from Rats. I reckon 23 from Tw Carlton. 23 from yeah. Carlton. Okay, so there's that. Now, there is a little craze going around on TikTok. It's mm -hmm. the uh, Coca-Cola diet with a few Mentos. Uh, we've seen it. Our producers, they don't think for themselves all that well. So no, they, they don't. They came up with this idea after watching it on Fox Footy. I'm led to believe Andrew Gaze had a crack at this. Okay. I'm going to drop these in here. You're going to put you, your... You're going to... Oh, I'm going to do it. Well, you can if you want. Uh, you probably can if you want. But is it going to spark up, up straight away? Yeah, so I'm going to hold the bottle and you've got to put your mouth straight over it. So I'll get you to stand up and come over here. Okay, here we go. This will be good. Yep. Um, I'll get you to hold the bottle and I will drop the Mentos in. So Arazio's just stepped away from the microphone. He's cracked the Coke bottle open. Oh, is this flat Coke? And flat. I'm going to drop them in. Then you've got to put your mouth straight over it, all right? Straight over it. Go on, put your mouth over it. Hold it for 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Oh, if you can see this, you need to get a visual on this. It's gone everywhere, all in his face. On his shoes. On his shoes. Oh, it's all everywhere. 
fantastic. That's probably the best challenge we've had for Raz. He always seems to get away with it light and easy. What's going on? I'll get him to make his way slowly back over to the microphone uh, in a second. But uh, quite humorous, Raz. It's uh, exploded in your face. It's gone everywhere, up the nostrils. Uh, how was that? I think it came out of my nostrils. I hope we got the footage and you can zoom in. I actually think it came out of my nose. <laughs> oh, it's everywhere. Thank you for that. And thanks again to all the listeners out there. As I said, uh, huge guest next week. If you want to get in touch, win a KFC beanie or bucket hat. But also, good luck to the AFL team on Sunday afternoon against Fremantle in the Pirate Life game. And also the Sample this Saturday, 2.10 at North Adelaide. Pleasure, Rock. And good luck to all the girls out there uh, that have nominated for the AFLW draft. We, we potentially have seven or eight girls that will join yep. the footy club. Uh, good luck to them tonight. Hopefully, some dreams come true. Maybe another Dersma. And Thanks if you miss off. out, keep working hard.